Hello there boys and girls, welcome back to another season of Upon This Rock, Season 6, Episode 1. We have got a lot to get through. As you can see on the screen, we have got the Champions League uh, group stage draw to get through, but we've got loads more before we get to that stage. Uh, and we've also got a game today as well, West Ham away, as you can see here, in a couple of days' time. So, first off, let's get through the transfers that we've made in and out. So we have 34 million pound ish to spend and these are the boys that we've sold and the boys that we have brought in so on the right hand side as you can see here we've brought in 20 million pound we've sold quite a few players so Jatek Shell went to Blackburn for 4.9 million pounds Andre Wisdom to Fulham to four for 4.1 million pounds Zach Clough and Matty Phillips to Burnley in a combined kind of seven seven and a half million pound um transfer for the two of those so they are both gone uh, Bacali was already going to Galatasaray for 2.2. Andreas Perea, Marcus Madison, Joe Wildsmith, uh, all gone out to Brentford, Rotherham and Crystal Palace, respectively. Um, Stephen Kingsley has gone out on loan with a mandatory fee on there as well. And there's just a bunch of youngsters that have gone out on loan, as well as Robert Snodgrass. And who have we bought in? We've bought in £21 million worth of talent. Um, so we're breaking even, really, and we've still got a massive... £32 million pounds to spend if we need it, but I feel that the squad is there or thereabouts. So we sent we sent out uh, Stephen, King, Stephen Kingsley on loan with a mandatory fee on there, and we brought in Josh Timon in real life. He has signed for Stoke, uh, but we have picked him up for Hull. Uh, we have picked him up from Hull for £11.5 million pounds as a backup to Walker Peters, and I think he's a better backup already um, than Stephen Kingsley. He's going to play as a fullback. Great anticipation, great concentration, concentration, great marking, great tackling, really good positioning and teamwork, good physicals as well for someone that is 22. Possibly paid a little bit over the odds for him, but they just weren't budging with that as well. So Josh Timmon is in the squad. And then I bought a couple of boys from Man United, Timothy Fosu Mensa. Uh, I've used him a couple of times in this game, both this year, this year's game and also last year's game. And the boy is an absolute beast. I brought him in to be a ball-winning midfielder to uh, rotate with Santiago Ascobar. And if he gets games, I think he'll be an absolute beast. As as the ball-winning midfielder, good marking, good tackling, positioning, teamwork, work rate, all really, really good. Aggression's good. Bravery's good. And some fantastic physicals for someone that's 23 million, uh, 23 uh, years old. Um, I think he'll be the he'll do the business and possibly overtake Ascobar in the near future. And we have brought the man, the myth, the legend back from United. Callum Gribbin is again a Peter United player, but this time he is here permanently. We haven't got him on loan. We've got we bought him in on a permanent basis for two million pounds. And I have seen some f uh, future stats from Callum Gribbin. If you get him game time. He becomes an absolute monster in that advanced playmaker role. So I've got him and Balak, as well as War Prowse, to really show up that advanced playmaker role. And I think, and we we know what he can do. Um, as you can see here, 27 games, six goals, four appearances, four assists, two player of the matches, 7.02 in the championship, which was the year that we went up. Uh, and he also came in on loan um, the uh, the year that the first year that we were up as well. But Callum Gribbin is officially a Peter United player officially 100% a permanent fixture for us as well and then these last two regens of the game coming trickling through now we're kind of four or five years in the first one is from Barcelona B and I think he is one of the best right backs I have ever seen on the game here he is Mark Castro from Barcelona B already worth 9.25 million I picked him up as you can see here, for £1 million. And he's an absolute steal. Three appearances already this season. One assist. Two player of the matches. 7.73 average rating already this season. And he is absolutely phenomenal. He is going to knock Durham out of the first team picture. Already three and a half star current ability. Four and a half star potential ability. And he is just absolutely phenomenal. He's come in and just laid down the marker for that right back spot. Great crossing, great marking, great tackling, fantastic work rate, great teamwork and positioning as well. All round what I'm looking for in a fullback and he's delivering already, which is fantastic to see. And then finally, another wonder kid striker that we brought in might possibly potentially be losing Cleedo. He's not very happy with me. I haven't um, accepted his transfer request. I'm not even talking to him about it. But we have brought in a Mokhtar Mayer, an Egyptian striker and as you can see the boy is phenomenal 18 finishing 14 composure 17 heading he's coming because santimina has picked up a little bit of a knock for the next kind of uh i think it's about six seven weeks he's coming and he's uh, already started on a 6.7 which isn't too bad playing him up front as he advanced forward 
Uh, and then dropping Kalido back ever so slightly as the false nine. And their pair, the pairing are, of those two are really paying dividends for us as well. But Mokhtar Maia, he will be the next big thing if we do lose Kalido. And uh, yeah, he, I'm very, very happy with what he's doing. In the uh, preseason, he scored six goals in four games, 8.07. And uh, he can be, he could be an absolute, absolute phenomenon which is good to see so they're all the transfers in and out how do you think i've done leave me a comment in the comment sections below have i've done uh, well have a uh, is there some, anywhere that we need to strengthen just let me know in the comment section below and as i said we've already started the season as you saw in some of the stats there as well play three or four games of the year and this is how it's worked out so we've got a relatively easy run at the start of the season our first big big game is against city um, at home in the, in the next kind of five or six games, really. So we started off with a 2 0 win at, at home to Newcastle. Gould and Kalido both scoring in those. Um, we had Santi Mina scoring against Derby um, away from home. Tight game, um, and we just came um, we just came through that very very easily. And then Kalido and Alan Riley, our young buck, our young eighteen year old, coming off the bench and bagging a goal. His first goal, first senior goal for the posh. And it was good to see another 2-0 win. Three clean sheets. And that puts us into second. Us and City are the only teams that have uh, got a 100% record in the league so far. So we look, it's looking very, very good for us this season. Um, I say we've got a relatively easy start. Um, and then it gets really kind of tricky around this play this time here. So Chelsea, Everton, Arsenal, Liverpool. So yeah, it can get quite tricky around there. But... We take one game at a time, especially with the Champions League in there as well. We've had the EFL Cup draw. West Brom, yet again, have drawn out the hat for us in the EFL Cup third round. Uh, I did have a bit of a chuckle to myself when I drew that because we just seem to constantly get um, pulled pulled next to them, pulled out of the hat with them in any kind of cup draw. So we will be, we'll be playing West Brom in the EFL Cup. It will be a highly rotated side uh, in that this season. I'm not really kind of focusing on that. I'd like to see how far we can get in the Champions League as well. Uh, speaking of the Champions League, let's do this draw. Let's see who we get out of the hat. We are fourth seeded for the draw as you scroll down here. We're not the worst team in Europe. Uh, Mould and uh, Stal Bucharest are slightly above us, slightly below us, sorry, in the uh, in the rankings. So let's quickly rip through the first three pots and let's see who we could potentially get. So we can't get drawn against another English team in this uh, in this stage of the draw. So first group is uh, Benfica, AC Milan and Dinamo Kiev. Is it going to be us? No, it's going to be Molder. Okay, not too bad. Juve, Athleti and Shakhtar. Not the best of groups. I really want to avoid that one. And Southampton go into that one. Not an easy group for Southampton. Paris Saint-Germain, Real Madrid and Dortmund definitely, definitely do not want to go into this one. And Copenhagen have that uh, have that little uh, test. Can't go into this uh, this uh, group because United are in there. Zenit, Sevilla and Sportings. Not a too bad a group with the, the players that we have at our disposal. But Stour go into that one. Can't go into this one because it's uh, got Liverpool in. And then we've either got the choice of Bayern, Aroma and Anderlecht. Which Roma and Anderlecht, I... I, I just, I think our boys can do something against them. Bayern are a heavy, heavy team. And you've also got Feyenoord, Monaco and Porto, which is not a bad group, actually. So let's see who we get. So we get so we get Feyenoord, Porto and Monaco in our Champions League group. I think that is a very good Champions League draw for us. Um, I think Feyenoord, we should be able to beat. The, the Dutch League isn't as strong as the Premier League. And it will be down to whether uh, Porto and Monaco see how they do against each other, and also see how we do against them as well. But I think it's a doable, I think it's a doable, uh, doable draw. Um, best case scenario, we get through to the uh, get through to the last sixteen. Worst case scenario, Europa League potentially. But yeah, I'm I'm happy with that draw. It could have been a lot lot worse with some of those uh, some of those teams in those pots. Now, as I said, we do have a game today. We do have West Ham coming up in the next couple of minutes. And we'll see you when we get to naming the team. So here we go then. This is going to be the team that's going to go to the London Stadium and face West Ham. So Berkey in goal, Walker-Peters, Kempempe, Baldwin and Castro 
at right back. We've got Gold, Ascobar and Fossum in the middle. We've got Balik as the advanced playmaker. Kalido is dropped down a little bit to the uh, false nine. And Mahir has gone up, up top as the advanced forward. On the bench, Komar, Durham, Fossu Mensa, Lorente, Anderson, Warprows and Cummins. As I said, Santamina out with an injury for seven to eight weeks. So he'll be out for a little bit of time. Uh, and let's see what we can do against the Hammers. We're in fantastic form at the start of the season. Three wins from three. City have also won their uh, their game. So they're now four in four. So we uh, we need to keep winning to make sure we keep on their coattails. They've got Dolberg up top. Um, I think he's one of the hottest prospects in the game this season. Um, on the, in, at the back, they've got Smalling and Wallace. Adrian is still there. So it's a competent, very competent West Ham squad. All I want to do is make sure that we uh, continue full expect winning this match because we are in fantastic form. In pre-season, we were scoring goals left, right and centre. And um, hopefully it will continue going into the actual season itself. As you've probably seen there, Kalido isn't in the greatest of morale because I just don't want to let him go. At the end of the day, if someone wants to come in and pay 35, 40 million quid, they can have him. Uh, they really, really can. Um, and I'll just get someone else in to uh, to fill those boots. Fossum now in the middle. Back to Balik. Into Walker-Peters. Walker-Peters driving inside. He's going to shoot. And oh, what a hit that is by Walker-Peters. That is his first goal of the season. He just drove inside there and absolutely lamped it past Adrian. And it's 1-0 to the posh. Here we go then. So Fossum into Balik. Balik plays into Walker-Peters. He just drives inside. Kalido just making a dummy run. And he just absolutely thrashes it past Adrian and uh, had absolutely no chance. 1-0 to the boys in blue. Half an hour gone now. Castro into Ascobar. Ascobar's just going to play it into Gould. Gould's going to take his time. Fossum into Maya, into Balik, into Kalido. Kalido through to Maya, but can't get through there. And Baldwin just picks up the ball. Just can play it patiently between uh, Fossum and uh, Gould here. Fossum's going to take his man on into Kalido, into Maya, and that is Slightly wide there for Maya, but good interlinking play between the midfield, Kalido and Maya. But the highlight straight after that miss, um, I think it might be for West Ham. Sherler now on this left-hand side, but Balik with a great tackle there. And he plays Maya down this channel. Is he going to get the ball into Kalido? Yes, he is. Kalido is there and Kalido makes it 2-0. Lovely ball there from uh, Maya. That's his third goal of the season, just after the half-hour mark. And it's 2-0 to the pass. We are in. Dominant form today. Maya on this right-hand side into the channel. Takes his man on, but he gets a good ball through to Kalido. Kalido just comes off his man. Lovely uh, movement there from uh, Fasundo. And he puts it into the back of the net. That's 2-0 to the posh. And we're going to go again, but just before half-time. Five minutes before half-time. Mateus Perea now inside. Takes on Walker-Peters into Jao Carvalho. Cavallo out to uh, out to the right back here. L lovely ball into Sherlock, into Dolberg, and that is 2-1. Five minutes before half time. That's his seventh goal of the season. Our only four matches in. He's in fantastic form so far this season, Dolberg. Lovely ball in. Schurler trying to get up. Comes out to Dolberg, and it's uh, just nodded past Berkey. 2-1 to the posh, five minutes before half time. That's half time. Not a bad half so far. I'm just going to calmly say... Played well. Still a little bit of room for improvement. We can do a little bit more. They haven't really caused us many problems. Hasn't been many highlights from them. It's been mainly us. Um, Maya and Kalido up top playing very, very well. Do have a lot of options on the bench this time round. I think we've strengthened yet again with another transfer window. Generally don't do my business in January. It's usually in the summer. Um, but yeah, done really, really well this year. So I think. But again, as I said before... If you think there's anywhere that we need to strengthen, possibly in January going forward, just pop it in the uh, in the comment section down below. Uh, well, um, I've been waffling on and uh, we had 25 minutes of the second half. Nothing really happened. Gould and uh, Balik not not the uh, strongest, so I might bring those off. Gould will come off for Lorente. Ward Prowse will go in for Balik. Um, Carl Wal uh, Wal Walker Peters isn't the uh, isn't the strongest either, but. I'm just going to leave those boys out there for now. Not going to do much more else on the uh, on the substitution front. That's our first goal conceded of the, the season as well from uh, Dolberg. Um, 
Berkey's been very, very good in the first three or four games. Final 10 minutes. Nothing's really happened in this second half. Um, I think they might hit, hit us on the counter-attack here. Dolberg down this left-hand side. He's got a one-on-one -on -one with Castro, but gets it in. But Baldwin is there to clear, hopefully. Yes, he is, but it can only clear as far as Smalling. Smalling one-on-one -on -one with Walker-Peters, and he gets through him. Smalling, he's going down to the, the uh, byline, but his cross is poor. Going to knock that down to standard. I think they're coming on ever so slightly uh, in the uh, last 10 Five or ten minutes, and that's going to run the game out. 20 seconds to go. Walker Peters down this left-hand side. Do not do anything silly. Into Warprouse, into Lorente, and into Fossum. Meyer now going to take on his man, but Wallace is there. Great tackle. Back to Kalido. Into Walker Peters. That's the final whistle. West Ham 1, Peterborough United 2. It's another win. Four wins in four for the boys in blue. And we're in fantastic form. Six uh, Goal difference of plus six. Our first conceded goal of the season in four games. So it's not too bad. Walker Peters with the player of the match. 8.3 rating for Walker Peters. Lovely stuff. Going into the transfer window now. And if anything happens, we'll bring it to you. And then we'll discuss when we're going to come back. Going to take part in the transfer deadline day. As I said, any news coming from the transfer deadline day, you will be the first to know. Hopefully, fingers crossed, we keep all of the men that we want and we do not lose anybody vastly important, uh, especially on transfer deadline day. Let's go straight into it. Ten hours to go in the transfer window. No one, and I repeat, nobody has come in uh, for any of our players. So who who's wanted at the minute? So Kimpenpe's wanted. Kalido's not wanted at all. So he wants to leave, but Kalido isn't wanted from any any club. Uh, Tim Joyce is wanted, but that's on loan. But everybody else is uh, is absolutely fine with staying at the club. An hour to go in the transfer window, and we are still comfortable with all of our players. Uh, no one's wanting any of our players, which is great. Thought Kalido would be the one that uh, that people were coming in after, but no one's wanted him now. Someone does. Atleti Atletico Madrid. In the final hour, are they, or final half an hour, are they going to come in with a bid? And that is it. The transfer window has passed. Nothing happened at all with our club. And that is it. Transfer window done and dusted. I'm happy with the signings we've made. I'm happy with people we've let go. I think I've made the team a lot, lot stronger from previous years, especially going into the Champions League, uh, FA Cup League, and the EFL Cup. Four, fighting on four fronts this season. Yeah, we'll we've got to come back and do the first home Champions League game against Porto. We'll bring you Porto and we'll bring you Swansea. Cannot wait to get started in the Champions League. If you've enjoyed the episode, please do leave it a like. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and you want to see more content, more of this content going forward. Don't want to miss out on any more uh, content that's going to be coming out in the near future. And until next time when we play in our very, very first game in the Champions League, I'll see you soon.